All right, guys, Dave Bartek, Athletic Baseball, Athletic Strength. Um, I did an Instagram video for you guys not too long ago answering um, how to get stronger quicker. So I promised you I was gonna do a longer video to go into the detail. So here it is, trying to get guys stronger and all you guys are asking, how do you do it quick, right? Everybody wants to throw harder, everybody wants to hit the ball harder and you're trying to do it quickly, all right? You guys are 14, 15, 16 years old and it's like, I only have a year to do this. I only have a year to do this. I only got two years till college. I get it, you guys are trying to go quick. You have to trust the process, okay? This stuff takes time. You're going through just natural progressions of strength and growth and development. You have to let it happen. During this time, there's two main things that we're really trying to do to make sure that guys are gonna get stronger as quickly as they possibly can. Number one is make sure that you guys can create new stimulus, new strength stimulus. Number two, we gotta make sure that we recover from that stimulus. We're trying to train hard, we're trying to break it down, and then we're trying to recover. Progressive overload, guys, is how we get guys stronger. Can you move a load in one of our foundational patterns and improve that, that moving of the load over time, okay? So take a squat, for example. This athlete squats 185, 185 pounds 10 times in October. And then we fast forward into the winter time and by March, that same athlete is squatting 185 pounds 15 times in a set, okay? That guy got stronger. There's different ways to push this, this progressive overload. Um, we can do it uh, with more reps and more sets with the same weight, the same number of reps and sets with more weight, and we can combine those two concepts, all right? So we like to fluctuate a lot with our, our frequency and our volume just to make sure that we're giving guys new stimulus. Generally speaking, guys, the progressive overload theme is something that you have to have in place in order for you to get stronger. We have other techniques that we put in, uh, like supersets, um, giant sets, and then finisher sets, pushing beyond failure, combining isometrics with a straight concentric lift. Adding that new stimulus to get stronger is the most important thing. I brought up isometrics. Isometrics are something that we use in our programming to just give athletes a better understand of control, okay? If we're loading a movement pattern and we don't have control over the load, you may or may not actually be stronger moving that load. So a great example of an isometric lift would be a bench press. If we're pressing, we could isometrically load a press in three different parts of the range of motion. We can load it somewhere in the mid range where mechanically we're gonna be able to, to take on the most tension. Okay, so think like um, slightly less than 90 degree elbows holding a bar or dumbbells in this position isometrically. Okay, we could take the same lift, we could bench press with a bar from a pin and lock out at the top and hold that isometric at the top. That would be an end range isometric that's a little bit more friendly and that we can add more load to. And then obviously we can push the deficit in strength as well by taking that same bench press and going towards the bottom of the movement where it's gonna be a lot less friendly and a lot harder to control that load where we use less loads, okay? So there's three ways we use isometrics to push the strength curve. The last one, guys, is the use of plyometric training. Plyometric training, think low loads, moving fast, force. We're trying to produce force. If you're trying to produce force, there's really two ways that we can use this, all right? We can use it um, both to prime some of our heavier strength movements while we're working on the progressive overload and we're trying to load movements, we can use some of these plyometric movements or some of these feel movements to prime properly. I take the example all the time of, of a snap down or a box jump and using that to prepare for a squat or a hinge movement. So when we're doing those movements, obviously we don't have a load placed on us. The goal is to go through a squatting and a hinging movement and then move explosively out of it without any load, okay? That's to prime the central nervous system, that's to get us ready to actually do our high threshold lifts, whether that's pushing a lot of reps or whether that's pushing a heavy load. The second way we like to use plyometrics is actually to measure our strength gains over time. So if you take a vertical jump and X athlete jumps 20 inches, okay, great. He jumps 20 inches, that's how much vertical force you're producing through the ground and then we do a six month squat regimen with him where we're trying to push the stimulus, we're trying to use our different, tech, different techniques, 
um, that athlete may test again in six months and jump 28 inches. That for us was a measure to figure out, okay, how much uh, vertical force did you actually produce in that period of time? Again, guys, this is just a little bit um, kind of like a deeper look, a deeper dive into how we actually think about programming for athletes to get them stronger. As you can see, it's not just a simple answer of do more bench press or do more sprints or do more this. You see a lot of advice out there where guys are saying things like, hey, just do this. It's not that simple. Okay, we have to take a very um, full encompassing approach to make sure that we can actually lead you in the direction to produce proper strength gains, okay? The last thing I'll say to you guys is when you're doing this training, when you're saying, okay, I'm gonna work progressive overload, I'm gonna just add 10 pounds every single week to this, you may or may not be able to do that, guys. Number one, if you're gonna move these loads, if you're gonna progressively overload, if you're gonna learn how to uh, properly perform isometric lifts as well as your straight set lifts, you have to understand that the lifts have to be done with the right intensity and the right form, okay? And that sounds about as cliche as it ever can, but we don't wanna put guys in compensated movement patterns. If you're having to compensate to add more weight, you're not actually training that movement pattern, okay? So the best thing you guys can do to get yourself stronger quicker is actually perform the moves better, okay? The load should actually come second. If you move better, if you move more efficiently, you will get stronger over time. So if you guys want a little bit more information about how we program for our athletes and how we do stuff here at Athletic, um, click the link below, whether, you're, whether you wanna train remotely or whether you wanna train in person. We've got a lot of stuff we can offer you guys. We've got a lot of information. We just wanna make sure that we're giving guys the best opportunity to actually get stronger quicker and not waste your time. All right, stay strong, guys.